friends, I hope that you are doing well. And I'm glad to be able to share with you a reflection for this Sunday. Just so you can prepare yourselves on this day, we're going to be looking at a couple of different readings, one from the Old Testament and then one uh, from the New Testament, if you would like to open your Bible and follow along. The uh, first reading that we are looking at this day comes to us from the Old Testament, from the book of 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 3 verses 1 to 10, if you'd like to follow along. Uh, And in this case, I'm using the NRSV version, though you are more than welcome to use a translation that you find speaks to you on this day. So let us listen now to the Word of God and what it says to us this day. Now, the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not gone had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called for me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls, you shall speak. Say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down. In his place. Now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the reading, the first reading of our reflection for this day. Our second reading comes from the New Testament, from the Gospel according to John, John chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. Uh, Again, from the NRSV version, if you would like to follow along. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We found him, about whom Moses and the law and the prophets spoke. Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see the heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Now, for those of you who don't know, I find that these days I am not in a pulpit every Sunday. And there are weekends, very few I admit, because of the lack of pulpit supply, when I don't have an obligation to preach. And on those very precious Sundays off on those weekends where it is completely empty, I think, oh, I get to go to church for myself. I get to go for fun, for worship, for my own spiritual well-being. And I go to sleep that night and I set my alarms, multiple alarms, because I'm that kind of a person. And by the time Sunday morning rolls around, more than I care to admit, I hit the snooze button again and again and again until I've hit it so many times it's well past the start time for any service that is nearby. Let me know, though, if this has ever happened to you, though. But because the truth is, life is hard, right? Life is hard, and you don't know. You don't know what's happened to me that week. It could have been a crappy week, just as I don't know what might have happened to you. It's not easy to always answer the call of God. It's not always easy to answer the call of God when we have a bunch of chaotic noise or we have the chaotic things life throws at us bouncing around in our heads and in our hearts when we're already tired and really just want to stay in bed. It appears that this struggle, it's not something that's new. The struggle to respond to God's call isn't new. Our reading from 1 Samuel reveals that the word of the Lord was rare in those days, that visions were not widespread. We could try and dive deep into why that was, but we might say that it was because perhaps there was a spiritual corruption. There was something going on that prevented people from hearing the word of the Lord. And Eli himself, funny enough that they talk about Eli aging and his vision failing him, Eli himself strayed on more than one occasion from the path of the Lord. Even by the time we reach the Gospel of John, our second reading, we find that Nathaniel isn't buying what Philip is putting out there. He isn't buying that anything good is happening. There's a chance that Phil Nathaniel might fear for, Nath uh, for his friend Philip. For all he knows, his friend got wrapped up in some religious cult. We should note, though, and I think this is important, we should note that in both cases, in both instances, that even though the people of God, and that includes us, the people of God, even though we do not always hear the word of God, even though we do not always receive visions from God, God doesn't stop trying to break through into our world. God doesn't stop. God doesn't stop trying to break through with the hope that one day, one day, our hardened hearts might lean in to listen. Assuming that you will, if you've already not uh, have heard God's voice, how will you respond? Will you rise from your slumber like Samuel and get up and say, here I am? Will your face contort itself with a look of skepticism like Nathaniel's? Because let me say that once we acknowledge the call, once we acknowledge the voice of God, there's a choice. There's a choice we need to make. We have the option on one hand to respond with action, and on the other hand, we have the choice 
of doing nothing. Apathy. Apathy, which we will address, but negatively impacts not just ourselves, but others as well. And while action might seem like the right choice, it's not easy. It becomes more challenging when we see where the voice of God is calling from. Where the voice calling for action, yearning for an answer, is coming from. Because God speaks, God speaks from the places we least expect, right? God speaks to us in the form of people we would not anticipate. God speaks to us from nursing homes, where there are lonely people where there are people with dementia or failing memories, failing bodies. God speaks to us in the places where people are hungry and thirsty in food banks. God speaks to us in the form of children who have questions. Speaks to us in the form of strangers who come from a foreign land, a distant land. God speaks, God calls But do we listen? Do we hear what God is saying? Because we often label these people and these places as others. As fears where we might lend a helping hand, but what good thing of God can spring forth from them? What good can happen? We somehow think that they are beneath us. It's from the places we least expect where God breaks into our world. Apathy doesn't work. Apathy in how we respond to these voices we hear. It doesn't work. It results in a deadening of our spirits. It results in broken bodies and broken communities and broken spirits, and brokenness all around. So how will we answer? How will you answer? The call and the face of such plights of injustice. Because even if we try to sweep all our problems under the rug, God cries out. God cries out calls out, demands a response from us. God knows that we cannot keep hitting the snooze button forever. At some point, we're going to need to roll out of bed and make a decision. Will we worship with our action, our words, our deeds? Or are we going to think we can take a day off, or not participate in the work of God. What I love in our readings for today is that in both of them, there's this moment of realization, this moment where authentic listening takes place for both Samuel and and Nathaniel. And once they realize who it is who is calling out to them, they respond. In Samuel's case, he goes out into the temple when he hears this voice and he runs to Eli and he says, Here I am, Hineni. Here I am, Hineni. But this response in Hebrew, Hineni, is much deeper than just here I am. We see this call and response used throughout Scripture as implying something much more. It's a willingness to put oneself out there to embark on a new journey, to put one whole self out there for something bigger. Implying that Samuel and Nathaniel in our reading from John are ready to embark on this journey of answering God's call. Hineni, 
Here I am. It is the cry of Moses. It is the cry of Abraham. It is the cry of Mary, mother of Jesus in her own way, who responds to God by saying, Here I am. Use my whole self. I'm reminded, though, on this day that it's also the cry of many from the civil rights movement who cried out Hineni to the Lord. People like Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks, Dorothy Height, who cried out Hineni, here I am, God, use me, use me to correct this corrupt generation filled with hate and contempt and prejudice. Hineni, here I am. Let that be our answer to the Lord this day and every day. Let us be ready to hand ourselves over to God. Because God invites us to see the extraordinary, to see the divine in the corners of life where no one else is paying attention. And God invites us to see those moments, even in places that are in plain sight, but no one seems to pay any attention. Believe it or not, there are people, perhaps you're one of them, who have also responded, who have responded already to this call. And it takes place during one of my favorite moments in the church, which is the ordination uh, and installation of church officers. That moment, that beautiful moment, where you have people gather around to lay hands or pray over those church leaders who are being called to serve. And they're asked this question. They're asked, will you pray and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? And they say yes. There are people like you, me, others, who have responded to this call to take action, to serve, to pray with energy and intelligence, imagination, and love. And our response to the voice, to the call of God, let this then as well be our mantra. Let us act with service, with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. We aren't always going to hit the mark. That's clear. We are going to make mistakes along the way. But the important thing is that we keep, keep taking action. That we continue to take action. Respond to the call of God, even if we never are 100% sure what we're doing is taking us in the right direction. We're trying. Many of us have responded to the call of God in this way, even if we've never answered the questions for ordination. And so I invite you to take a moment to answer this question for yourself, even if you've already answered it. How will you rise and answer this call of God? In our reading from the Gospel, John Nathaniel eventually comes around to seeing Jesus. Seeing Jesus as Philip says he is, the Messiah, and sets out on a path to be one of Jesus' disciples. Breaking down our misconceptions, our skepticism in response to God's call, that has a cost. It costs Nathaniel something, it costs Samuel something, because nothing worth doing is without cost. Discipleship has a cost. It may mean that we do things or say things or think things that cost us social or material capital. And as I said before, we may not always get it right. We may not always get it right or know where the voice of God is coming from, but it's imperative that we say that we respond with here I am. Because there are consequences, dear friends, 
for us not answering the call. There are consequences for our apathy, and they are real, they are tangible, and they speak louder than any words we might say. In our world that is hurting, crying out for justice, our frequent silence and inaction is concerning. Nathaniel asks, can anything good come from Nazareth? Eli probably is wondering, what's wrong with this child? In a time like today, where the word of God feels faint, where visions are rare, where injustice and oppression run rampant, let us respond to the voice of God that calls to us, waking us from our slumber, from the unexpected places in our world. Let us rise. Let us take action. Let us, like Abraham, Moses, and those leaders who have come before us, respond to God with a robust Hineni. Here I am, Lord. It is I. Use me, mold me, make me an instrument of your will, and embody your love. Apathy or action. The choice is ours to make. How will we respond? Amen.